What was that beep? Are you burning down the boat? batteries anymore anymore they're throwaway units it's 10 year life it's only been what three years two years did you have to turn it off i just pushed the test button let's see if it goes off again i guess yeah. i'm up front this morning doing laundry hand washing all of our clothes beautiful peaceful day and then I heard the fire alarm going off so I don't know why the boys fire alarm went off we'll keep an eye on that but start with the swimsuits and easy things to wash quick things to dry and then later this afternoon I'll do like a second round where I wash all their shirts and pants I just hand wash in a bucket and then I just hang them up to dry generator exhaust is right there and he's got his window open. I wonder if it sends in the exhaust. Oh. But the carbon monoxide detection is not doing anything. Make sure there's no last note that's stuck in the windows are working. I'll leave this door open. Yeah. You getting up? Okay. okay. It only took the fire alarm going off twice to wake Chase up. Dishes are a never ending task for this family. That was just dinner last night. Of course we had what two other boats over? But uh, that's probably the one appliance I miss the most about living on a boat versus the house is the dishwasher. Really? I like that dishwasher. That's as far as the kitchen is concerned. I, I miss having a, a dishwasher, I guess. I just, I just liked it. And a big full-size stove and oven. I miss a washing machine. That's the appliance I would What's, over a dishwasher. That's because I'm the cook and you're the... <laughs> we are um, us kids also do chores. We have this little chore chart right here. Today is Wednesday right now, so I'm supposed to be washing them. Thank you, Dad, for doing that. So, my mom's the dryer, but I can take over that. And Chase, that's laundry and garbage. We all got a chance to do it, and we all have a little chore we do. And once you're done, usually it's nice to help out somebody else. So then we're all done, hey then we um, get to all do something. Hey guys, when we think about being in the morning. I thought we were talking about 11 because we said high tide was at 10 something, almost 11. And then it's about an hour cruise down there. Is that right? Let's double check again. Okay, I couldn't remember doing that. I think we said Eno would have to leave at 10 because of the slower pace. So I think you and I were going to wait until about 11. Okay. Copy that. Thank you, sir. I'll double check the tides here in a second. If it's different, I'll give you a shout. But otherwise, let's find out what. Copy that. Today, we are leaving um, Spanish Wells. We're going to be going down um, the coast to the west coast of Spanish Wells and we have to go through a cut called Current Cut. Current Cut can be a very tricky cut. It's a narrow, almost like canal, and uh, because of the bodies of water on both sides and where the tide moves in and out, there can be up to a 10 knot current. And you have to hit it right because if we hit it against it, 
I had a full tide going against me. Hey, Chase. Can you hold off for a second? Uh, if you hit it at the... Um, or it's coming against you and you're trying to go into it, well, if your boat can't make, you know, six knots, because like your sailboat, you'll be going backwards and you can't get through. On the flip side, if you're going with it and it's the 10 knot current behind you, that can get you squirrely sideways. Now that's usually what only happen with bad weather, um, wind, current, all that kind of working against you. Again, we've learned our lesson. We only move on very nice, calm days. I don't know if you can see outside or not, but it's gorgeous outside. The prediction for today and tomorrow and the next day look beautiful. Um, so we're just gonna time it for what they call slack tide, which is right in either the top end of high tide or the bottom end of low tide. Uh, before the tides switch and turn directions. There's normally a couple hours where it's just flat calm, uh, no movement of water either direction. So that's called slack tide, and we're going to uh, time it for them. For them. The, uh, they, they give us the tide in Nassau. That's the biggest, the main place where you get your tides in, in the Bahamas. And they say that it's an hour and a half to two hours after high or low tide is when the slack tide is at this particular cut. Uh, that's one of the great things about a lot of the books and different things that we have, the Explorer charts, the, the Waterways Guide, all those, even Navionics. As you read and look into all these things, every single one of them said the same thing, which is very comforting to know that multiple sources are, yep, this is how you're supposed to do it, because this will be our first time through current cut. So it, it can be bad. You don't want to get yourself scared. It can be a very bad thing, but if you do everything right, it should be no big deal. So that's what we're going to do today. Just getting ready to go through current cut we actually talked to another boater that's coming opposite us and cool story their last name is Knapp also so we're not related but maybe kind of wish we were they got a much nicer boat than we have they have a Nordhaven 62 Two. yeah it's beautiful so um, I think it's gonna be important that we don't go through at the same time because I don't think, I think that would be wise. I think there'd be plenty of room, but we'll see. Uh, and where we are right now, we can't even see the cut yet. So we're we're kind of sitting here like, which... Illuminate, illuminate, Zarpe, over. Zarpe. He's illuminate, go ahead. I just let you know, once you get through the pass, come inside. Uh, it's pretty much my last down. Oh, nice. It's going to be It's not calm. bad over here. We've got um, one, two one foot chop, maybe right. an occasional double up at a two footer, but it's, it's just light chop over here. That is current cut. Can't quite see it yet. It look like much, does it? That's a small little passable spot. Chris just picked up some speed so we have a little more control while we go through the cut. It is an hour and a half past low tide in Nassau which is right when we're supposed to be cutting it. So there's a lot of rock around. It's not a uh, sandbar, beautiful cut. So Carter and I are up top watching. Not that we can really do anything, but Chris drives like a boss. It's not gonna be a problem at all. Coming through current it was about a half a knot to a knot current uh, coming at us, so it was great. We dropped the, dropped that speed, got through. Really, the the thing that was messing with me was the following seas because the winds coming from that direction today they weren't big, but they just were enough to just squirrel me around. So we had to work the wheel and make sure we stayed right in the middle. It was 35, 40 feet deep all the way through. If you look at the water in front of us, it's very obvious where the shallows are over here, 
deep blue water, and then we got some shallow sand patches on our starboard side. So uh, it was a nice, uneventful passage, just like we wanted. going nuts just sniffing everything which is actually good because it's about to rain and we like it when it rains right after we do laundry because then it rinses the laundry with fresh water with, and it rinses the soap off for free so we don't have to use any of our water. Mm -hmm. 